Hey folks, well looky looky what we have here, an official System76 box. What can be in this? Well, if you read the title of the video, you already know. This is a video about the System76 Galago Pro, one of the most highly anticipated Linux laptops in 2017. I've seen, I've seen this in, in publications that normally don't touch Linux very often, so this laptop seems to be a pretty big deal in the Linux world right now. Uh, I've seen Brian Lunduk talk about it. Uh, I've had friends just drool over this machine. Another friend of mine bought one of these too. So uh, I think it is time and it is my duty as a Linux enthusiast that we take a look at this. I think we need some detailed videos about this machine because it it looks cool, but does it live up to the hype? I think we need to find that out. For those of you unfamiliar with System76, they are a company based out of Colorado which specializes in machines that run Linux and run Linux well. They custom build desktops and servers and they resell Clevo laptops, which is exactly what we have here with, this, with the uh, Galago Pro. Now this is the official System76 box, which looks a little beat up and roughed up because it was shipped from California, but hey, what can you do, right? Down here it has System76's slogan, Unleash Your Potential, because they're about making computers that run Linux that allow you to get work done and play games and whatever. Mostly get work done, I would think, by Unleash Your Potential. So, here's what it f says. It says, do not employ sharp objects seriously. Now, that's a bit, of, that's a bit weird, because there's tape all over this box, so... I used a box cutter to cut through the tape, but what I think they're trying to tell you is don't use, don't employ the use of a knife inside the box. Obviously, you got to cut the tape somehow. So let's open this box. This is the famous box you'll see online. It has many different designs in it. Look at all that. It's pretty cool. I love this ship, this uh, rocket ship thing here planets and whatnot. I think that's pretty cool. And below that, you get more designs inside the box, and you get the laptop. Now this is where they say, don't use a knife, <laughs> because the way they package these is interesting. They, the, the plastic is attached to this cardboard, and it just folds it. It folds over the laptop and cushions it there. So what comes in the box? Looks like you get a lint-free cloth. Um, an SD card dummy, some extra hardware, I'm not sure for what, probably for the hard drive, I would imagine. Uh, what else is here? Both of my power supplies I ordered are right there, so that's excellent. I'm going to leave that in the box for now. And the computer itself is right here. Looks like you just pull this out in one unit. What will you make? Hopefully a video, <laughs> assuming that this uh, assuming that this goes well. All right, so to open this, you just unfold it. I've had ThinkPads come in packaging like this before, so I'm used to it. You unfold it like that, so you can see it. I'll turn it over. I need two hands to do that. So then, take the machine, pull it out in the most ungraceful way on camera possible. Okay, computer. And it looks like I get an envelope here too. Wonder what's in the envelope. Let's find out. Ah, stickers. Nice. Nice. Stickers and whatnot. Little System76 sticker right there. Nice. Thank you for purchasing a System76 computer and joining our growing family of users. If you're not already an Ubuntu user, let us be the first to welcome you to the world of open source software. At the bottom of this card are links and resources for getting started with Ubuntu. 
We take pride in building our systems to suit all your needs. So don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or comments. We also welcome enthusiastic compliments. Thank you and enjoy your new System 76 computer. So that's pretty cool. So there you go. I think because I uh I think because I mentioned that a few Linux podcasts that I watch sent me to System76, they sent me the stickers. That's pretty cool. So here's the machine itself. Let me clean all this up first, though. Okay, so I dug out one of the two power adapters and the power cord that I need. I'm leaving the other one in the box for now. And here's the machine, which has a bunch of box crap all over it. So, let me... So how about we take this plastic off, eh? There's the machine. Very glossy display. Doesn't that look familiar? This is a 2013 MacBook Air, which as you can see, has very similar design cues to the System76 laptop. Yep, there you go. You can kind of see the direction that Cleva was going. They were sort of modeling this after... Oh, they wanted to make this the ultimate, lin the ultimate Ultrabook in their lineup. System76 also wanted to do the same thing as they are a Cleva reseller. So, what they did, what Clevo did, and System76 did in tandem, is they made a computer that's very reminiscent of the MacBook Air and of several Chromebooks. This hinge design reminds me very much of Chromebooks. Whereas, you know, the hinge on the back of this is just, you know, it's just a black blob, basically. Now, Ultrabooks you think of as very thin laptops with not a whole lot of I.O., like this MacBook Air, for example. Same thing with Chromebooks. Is they're, they're more of this size, but don't have much I.O. This improves upon all of that in every way. So, well, in 90% in of its ways, I should say. So, you get a lot of I.O. on the sides unlike you would on a Chromebook or an Ultrabook like a MacBook Air, for example, or even the new 12-inch um, MacBook. Here's the bottom of the machine. You get nice rubber. But yeah, the design is very similar to a MacBook Air. That was my point there. Design cues. And it looks, and I don't really mean that as a bad thing. Both of these laptops look very good, and you can see why. I mean, there are differences in design, obviously, like this bezel around the webcam. I, I, I personally think that's a little off-putting, but it's not a deal breaker. I, I think the circle looks a little bit better. Anyhow, enough comparisons. Let's take a look at the System76 Galago Pro itself. So, what does this machine offer you? First of all, it gives you a pretty good I.O. You get your power, you get a SIM card slot, which unfortunately is not active on the Galago Pro. It might be on the on the uh, Clevo models and Sager models and you know whoever, sell, whoever else sells Clevo laptops, but in this particular instance the SIM card slot is not active. You get USB 3.1 here. The power button is on the side, which I really like. That reminds me of old laptops from the 90s that used to do that which honestly is a convenient spot. I like that better than having to open the keyboard to do it. Even though you're going to open the keyboard anyway, but that's besides the point. You get separate microphone and headphone jacks, which I really like. That 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 makes me very happy. <laughs> you have four indicator LEDs here. Uh, one of them's for airplane mode. One of them is for hard drive. One of them is for power and charging. And the other is for low battery, I think. On this side, you have, oh my goodness, lots of I.O. You get a USB 3.1 port that doubles as a Thunderbolt port. Uh, you have another USB 3.1, USB-A port. Mini Display port, HDMI. Um, an SD card slot. Honest to goodness, Ethernet on an Ultrabook. How about that? And a Kensington lock slot, of course. Now I think the ma main advantages to this over the MacBook Air are, are Ethernet and the SD card slot. That makes this machine 
just an amateur, an absolute amateur in terms of uh, I.O. So that's pretty cool. Here's the bottom of the machine. One thing that I'm glad they didn't take from Apple's design is the lack of ventilation. Apple's computers are not well ventilated at all. This machine is. Look, it's got vents on the bottom and all that stuff. It's very, very well ventilated. And I'm sure it comes out the back just like it does on a Mac or something like that. We'll have to confirm that. But let's see if it does. Is there a vent there? Yes, it is vented very similar to a Mac, but it actually has an intake that's in a different spot, which is down here. I like that. So that's pretty cool. And you can take the bottom off with plenty of screws, just like you can with this. So very similar design in the way you would service a machine, except you can actually service this machine. Here's the bottom tag. Model name is Galago Pro, and the model number is Galp2. I th there was a Galago Ultra Pro before this, but this one is more like an Ultrabook. So that is pretty cool. So what does the keyboard feel like? feels very similar to a Mac, actually. The old Mac keyboards, not the new butterfly switches, but the old ones. It's fine. It's a pretty average chiclet keyboard, but it doesn't feel bad by any means. It has... this has quite a bit of bounce to it. and It's very tactile for, for a scissor switch keyboard, which is pretty nice. The trackpad feels alright. Buttons feel pretty high quality. So that's cool. Uh, it's got some stickers on the front here, of course. Core i7. I got the i7 model, by the way. We'll see the specs when I turn it on. I think that's a Thunderbolt logo, correct me if I'm wrong, and that is uh, HDMI right on there. I'm not sure if these stickers are going to stay because they look kind of stupid, but I usually don't touch stickers. I usually just leave them alone. Now, how about display flexing? The display does flex quite a bit, as you can see. Look at this. So it's not like, does the Mac do the same thing? No, this is actually more sturdy. So the metal, clearly the metal on here is very thin. It's not built to quite the same standard as a Mac would be, as far as the back of the display. So maybe it's fragile, I don't know, but it flexes an awful lot keyboard doesn't seem to flex. The bottom panels don't really flex as much, but the screen does. Uh, this machine is very serviceable, too. There are videos on System76's website of getting inside this machine. In fact, I'll show a picture of what it looks like inside this machine in a moment. Now, as you can see here, you get access to the RAM, you get access to the SSD, you get access to everything. Wireless cards, yada yada yada. You, this machine, despite being an ultrabook, is very serviceable. You can really take advantage and get a lot for your money. This is why I chose this machine as my second um, System76 laptop, is because it's an ultrabook that you can actually service, which you normally don't get outside of things, outside of business class laptops like ThinkPads, for example. Uh, so, I think that's pretty cool. Alright, so let's actually turn this thing on and take a look at the out of the box experience. I'm sure it'll be similar to my Gazelle, but let's take a look. Keyboard is backlit, I should mention that. I don't like how reflective this screen is, that's actually kind of annoying. I wish they sold this with a matte display. Although you can see how small that Ubuntu logo was. This has a very high DPI display. Look how small that is. <laughs> it's so small. This has a 3K display. Which is ridiculously tiny. So let's just make a generic user since I'm probably not going to keep this machine with Ubuntu on it for very long. Because I, I, I just don't use Ubuntu really that much anymore. Although I do appreciate them coming, it coming out of the box. So let's do user with no password. Well, I'll make the password something like one, I guess, like I did last time. It's not what I wanted. 
fine. I'll make the name of the computer a bunch of numbers, too. Okay. And I'll configure the time zone and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, this high DPI display is kind of what makes is what makes this laptop what it is. You get a ridiculous amount of resolution out of this display. I need to turn the scaling on because you can't see anything. I mean, I can read it, but I have to really like lean over and look at it. But I'm sure in the video you can tell that this is just a bit ridiculous. Now what I've seen people do is either turn the scaling up or just lower the resolution to 1080p. And if I were using Ubuntu, I could use System76's repository that has drivers, fixes, and whatnot. Oh, see? It's scaled by itself. If I were to run Debian, I would use something like, um, I would just turn, or I wouldn't use anything, I'd just turn the resolution down. Alright, so let's fix the scaling, because I can't see a thing. Now, as you can, yeah, because I, I want to show you a few things, and it's kind of hard to do that. So let me turn the scaling up to about, oh boy. Actually, 1.5 is pretty good. 1.62 is better. About 1.75. Now, you see the System76 driver thing in here. This is a utility that they add from their own repo that installs their own drivers, restores the system, creates log files, all that stuff. And it essentially makes the hardware work well with the software for a unified experience. It's a very Apple approach to things in a positive way. So this is what it comes with. It comes I ordered this with Ubuntu 16.04. So let's go to System Monitor and show you the rest of the specs. Which I forget is if it's in Ubuntu or not. Oh, wow. Um, is there a way to look at that that isn't annoying? Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll be looking again. Oh, wait, details. There we go. Okay, this will tell you what this machine is. Okay, so I ordered this with 16 gigs of RAM. I got the i7 7500U in this machine because you cannot upgrade that later. Uh... I ordered it with a 500 gig SSD, as you can see, a 500 gig M.2. I didn't opt for NVMe because NVMe is very expensive at the moment. And uh, it seems to run very well, very fast. Uh, the experience is similar to the Galago as far as usage goes. It, has, it looks like it has a similar keyboard where you have uh, five different levels of brightness on the keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, off. It's one of those. You can shut the LCD off at the flick of a switch like that. Uh, same keyboard shortcuts as you would find on the uh, the Gazelle. It's a Clevo-based machine, so generally you'll find consistency, which is nice. This display, though, wow. Now, I think what we need to experiment with here is actually changing the resolution. Does that make the pixels look weird or not? So let's go to the displays and turn the scaling back down to 1 where you can't really read anything the resolution of the display is 3200 by 1800 which is 3k so let's change that to 1080p and see how it looks uh, it blurs a little bit yeah it seems to blur a little bit uh, it's tolerable, but it, it doesn't, the scaling definitely looks better. When you take a look at the screen closely like this, it's going to be blurred to the camera because the camera can't focus, but it looks blurrier at 1080p than it does scaled up. So, it's not perfect. If you don't mind that, you could get by that way, but it seems like the high DPI display thing is in its younger days as far as uh, Linux is concerned. The hardware is fine, but the software isn't. Even on Windows, it's not perfect. So, in Linux, I'd imagine they, they really had to shoehorn this in to make it work properly. So, I think it'll look better. It's 1.62, 1. Point, uh, not 1.62, 1. Point, yeah, 1.62 scaling at 3K seems to look fine to me. That's readable. You, you can use that. 
Yeah, it. That's that. The high DPI display to me is a little questionable. I think that's going to be better aged than it will be out of the box right now. Scaling is not the not been around and matured all that much on computers in general. Um, so it, on 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 the Mac, it seems to be fine with Retina displays and things like that. They've perfected it, but on Windows and Linux, it's not quite where it should be. Uh, but on this panel, if you lower the resolution to 1080p, it is usable if you use another distro that does not have scaling features. Um, so that's an option. However, it's a little blurrier than if you were to just scale it like I am now. I think it looks better like this. So there is that. So I think what I'm going to do is experiment with this machine and see what, see what configuration that I like best. The power adapter for the Galago Pro is very small, very light, very tiny. It's a 19 volt, 2.1 amp, 40 watt adapter, so it, it doesn't need a whole lot of power. You could definitely find generic replacements for this if you lose it, or just find another uh, version of the Chicone one here, or Chigony, however you pronounce it. Okay, it's been uh, several days I've been playing around with this Galago Pro. And I have a few things to say about it, but first I think we should take a look at how I've set the whole thing up. I don't like the fact that you can't open this with one hand. That's kind of annoying. Anyway, <clears throat> let's start the machine up, and I'll show you what I've done. And we'll show you the BIOS and stuff like that. So let's get into the BIOS here. Of course I've turned off UEFI because I think UEFI is irritating. Here we are. It's an AMI BIOS. There's your 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, and you have an Intel Core i7 7500U processor at 2.7 gigahertz. So it's your standard Ultrabook hardware, as you can see. And of course in the SATA port there, there's the Western Digital 500 gig SSD. That is a Western Digital Blue SSD, as I figured out. Western Digital's SSDs are essentially SanDisk, in case you were wondering about their SSDs at all. As you can see, I've shut off <coughs> UEFI boot, because I just don't like it. I think it's annoying. And that's pretty much all there is to say about the BIOS. So let's boot the machine up. I've installed Debian 9 on it, as I have with most of my machines. Debian 9 was just released the other day publicly, so no longer a testing version as of now, which is kind of neat. I've been using it since before then, but hey, <laughs> live on the edge, man. There's the login screen. You see how tiny that is. What I ended up having to do is downloading the settings applet and uh, increasing the font and DPI to 150. So despite it being this small, I can still read what I'm typing. and we shall log in. And here we switch resolutions. I am running this at 1080p. Um, that's how I got around this whole 3K screen issue I've been having. Uh, so I'm just running this at 1080p with Mate. And not only is, does that seem to make the laptop perform better, but it also, um, it, Mate doesn't support high DPI yet. It's on their list of things to do. It's not there yet, so there's just not much point in using high DPI with it. And in fact, I'll change the resolution just to show you what that looks like. It it <laughs> it makes it look so small. Thir 3200 by 1800. Watch how small this gets. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. Let's go back to the other one. So 1080p on here. Does it look okay? Yeah, it does actually. Um, I mean, if you put your eye right up to it, you're going to see a little bit of a blur. But honestly, it scales perfectly with this mo with this display. It looks great. There's your usage. Bunch of swap. 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, dual core hyper threaded CPU. There you go. Yeah. So, how has it been running? 
Uh, it's been running very well. I'm pretty impressed with Cabby Lake Ultrabook hardware. It's pretty nice. Uh, so as far as as far as the laptop actually running Linux well, it does. It runs it very well. I've tested several distros on it. I've tested several f versions of Ubuntu. I've tested OpenSUSE. What else have I tested? Uh, I think I tried Fedora at one point as well, and they all ran. No issues running it because this, just like a lot of the ThinkPads, this is all Intel hardware, um, just like the Gazelle I reviewed previously. So you're not really going to have too much trouble running anything on here, as far as I can tell. Uh, most of the issues I have with this machine are hardware related, believe it or not. And they're not deal breakers, but they're, they're things that just make me go, huh, okay. Um, the first thing I've noticed is that the fan in this machine is a little whiny. Um, I, ha I have it sitting on top of this stack of ThinkPads here. And when, when this, I've noticed that since it's on a flat surface now, I've noticed when I push the CPU, the fan starts to ramp up pretty high and get whiny. But when I pull the laptop up off, the fan speed immediately goes down. So that tells me that the airflow is not the best when it's placed on top of something like this. That could be the ThinkPad absorbing heat. Um, but I, I'm not totally sure on that. But I've noticed, I've noticed that, at least in this case. Um, I should try putting it on an actual desk or a table and see what it does that way, but this is where it's been as I've been playing with it. Um, what else can I say about this machine? The, ba the keyboard backlight is just the same as it is on the Gazelle. You get your five levels. One, two, three, four, five. And normally, I've been leaving it off most of the time, and, and it's been fine. Um, you also have the button to turn the LCD screen off, which I find very useful. Uh, same fun same exact keyboard and function keys as the Gazelle, pretty much, uh, except that it's a it's more like a Mac keyboard. Of course, you get on the System 76 version of this machine, you get your Ubuntu key, which in Mate does absolutely nothing. <laughs> so there is that. Um, now there is one issue I had that is software. Actually, I should mention before delving further, and that is. Um, Linux certain it seems that Linux in a lot of situations can't handle the the 3K screen on this machine as well as you'd think it should. Um, both uh, a friend of mine and I have experienced on certain desktop environments in Linux that it when you full screen a high definition video the frame rate gets choppy, very choppy, and uh, that I've tested several different operating systems on here that does not seem to happen on Ubuntu 1604 and uh, it, it, it's not as severe on Ubuntu GNOME. However, when I use the Cinnamon desktop or Linux Mint, and in my buddy's case, uh, KDE, that problem does persist at the full 3K resolution when you full screen a YouTube video and unplug it. I should mention that. When you unplug, it's, it, it performs fine when it's plugged in on the 3K screen on in pretty in pretty much every case, but on a few of these desktop environments, the choppy frame rate issue happens when you unplug it and run it on battery, which kind of defeats the purpose since it's a laptop. Um, scaling this down to 1080p solves that problem, uh, and believe it. And using a Ubuntu 1604 plane with Unity, you don't seem to have that issue either. Uh, I even tested Windows 10 on this just to be sure, just to know it wasn't the hardware doing it, and Windows 10 performed perfectly as far as uh, unplugging unplugging the laptop and running a video. So the hardware isn't at fault. I think that has to do with compositing in the desktop environments that we're looking at. Um, however, that I do have some criticisms of the screen in particular. This has a 3K screen in it, 3200 by 1800. That, to me, is massive overkill for a 13.3 inch Ultrabook. Uh, it, it seems to be the norm these days uh, to go for high DPI, but it's, it's kind of not there yet in Linux as far as I'm concerned. It's there for a couple desktop environments, it's there for um, KDE, it's there for GNOME, it's there for uh, Cinnamon. Uh, and I think you can twiddle with XFCE to make it work, but Mate, it's not there. It's on the list, but it's not there yet. Um, and if you want to use, and if you just want to use this on a TTY, it's <laughs> it's small. I mean, I think you can use X Rander to fix that. 
<clears throat> but uh, it it just seems like overkill to me. It, and in that way, I think the hardware that they put in this machine is it it doesn't quite match the screen. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me to pair a 3K screen in an Ultrabook with um, Ultrabook hardware. You know, you have the dual core hyper threaded processor and Intel HD Graphics 620. I it doesn't make sense to me that they System 76 does have the Oryx Pro, which comes with a 1060 or a 1070, and you can get a high DPI screen with that, and the NVIDIA card will drive that no problem. But it, it seems like whenever you push the graphics on this machine, um, it will choke. I've noticed that with Second Life viewers and certain games, when you run them at 3K, it will choke. With a Second Life viewer in particular running not even full screen, just like maximized in the window at the 3K resolution. The frame rate's around 35 FPS to 40, maybe. Uh, but if you scale down to 1080p, you get a steady 60. So it seems to me almost like the screen is um, the the screen in this laptop is almost too much for the hardware. Uh, in some ways, I mean, I, I I know I shouldn't expect 3D to be great on an Ultrabook, but on the ThinkPads, it's been pretty okay on this it's been it's choked a little bit because of the resolution so uh, for me running this at 1080p has fixed that problem and then and, and the screen still looks great at 1080p anyway so there's really not much of an issue there uh, I do wish the screen wasn't glossy though you may have noticed in parts of the video that my reflection is in the screen I wish they had chosen a matte screen I glossy sucks it just does glossy is bad but I can live with it. I've lived with it before on my Dell Mini 10V and I, and uh, some other machines. It's it's survivable. It's not that bad. Uh, it's fine. As far as the rest of the fit and finish of the machine go, you saw earlier in the video that the screen does flex quite a bit, and that that's unfortunate. The screen it it it's not. I mean, look at that. It's a little bit, the screen's a little bit thin and flimsy. And I feel like if there's aluminum or something on the back of this, that that should not be an issue. Um, so maybe Clevo, so maybe when Clevo makes another generation of this machine, they can fix that problem. So those are a few issues I've had. Let me shut the screen, or shut the screen off, shut the computer off. And we'll, we'll make a conclusion of this whole thing. Here, see, look how glossy that screen is. You can see me right in it. Okay, so to conclude the System76 Galago Pro, what do I think of it? Um, I have mixed feelings about it, I would say. Uh, it's a nice laptop, don't get me wrong. It's very nice. I love the aluminum f finish that the whole thing has. I love the fact that the System76 logo is not a sticker on this, and it's actually engraved, embossed, whatever you want to call it, into the um, into the back panel of the screen. So it's not a sticker, it won't peel off. I really like that part. Um, the screen is super glossy, that's a part I don't like. Um, and we'll come back to the screen after a while. I love the keyboard, the keyboard is fantastic. It's very, it's very tactile compared to the Mac keyboards that I'm used to that look a lot like this. The trackpad is, eh, it's alright, it's passable, it works. Uh, I've seen some people online complain about the fact that it has separate buttons at the bottom and that it's not a click pad. Well, that's an advantage in my mind. Uh, I prefer la I prefer trackpads that are just a trackpad without trying to be fancy and just have the buttons below them. Because this is generally how I use a trackpad and it feels great uh, to use one that way. The only thing I would complain about is that the trackpad may be a tiny bit small. I mean, you compare that to a MacBook Air trackpad and it's a little bit bigger on these and it still feels better to use it and it still feels better to just use real buttons though I think that's much better um, the scrolling works pretty much the same as it does on the gazelle that I made a video of previously you get the two fingers scrolling both left and right and horizontally and I really like that about these uh, Clevo machines is that you get that and system 76 as a result um, for the Galago Pro, I would definitely opt with the i7 option if if it's if you can afford it. 
uh, because you get an extra meg of cache on the CPU. The performance isn't all that much different, but if you plan on keeping the laptop for a long time, I would definitely opt for the i7. I did, because I plan to keep this machine for quite a long time. Um, another very positive thing about this laptop, just like the Gazelle, is that it has I.O. I mean, you, you take a look at something, you take a look at what uh, Cleva was trying to emulate here, which is the MacBook Air, and it does not have a whole lot of I.O. on it. But you take a look at something like the Galago Pro, it has a ton of I.O. on it. Uh, ignoring the SIM card slot that doesn't do anything, it has the separate headphone and microphone jacks, which I very much appreciate, because I have headsets that use that. Uh, I like the full-size USB port. Mainly on the right side here is where all the is where I love all this I/O. You saw on the right side of the MacBook Air, you didn't get anything, you, but you get all this coupling with USB-C and um, full HDMI port, full SD card slot, honest to goodness Ethernet. It, it's just fantastic. You get really good I/O with this machine. I like the ventilation of this machine. It's pretty good. Although I have noticed that when you put it on a flat surface, the fan seems to run a little bit louder and a bit faster. So um, a cooling pad might not be a bad idea, or at least to elevate this thing a little bit. Uh, airflow could be improved slightly um, as far as the design goes. If they just made these rubber feet a little taller, I think that would solve that problem. Um, but again, this it, it feels very much like a Gen 1. It's the kind of machine you really want to like, but you still see the flaws in it. And um, I think the I think the two one of the bi one of the bigger flaws is that the screen is so flimsy. Look at that. I mean, I I don't think it's going to break under normal use, but it it feels a bit flimsy when you look at something like a MacBook Air and it's very very sturdy, even despite being a very thin screen. So that's something they need to work on, I think. I don't think that's a huge problem, but it's just something I noticed in terms of quality. Uh, the other th the other thing about the screen is that it's very glossy, as you can see. And uh, I don't like glossy screens at all. So that's kind of... That could be an Achilles heel for some people. It's not a huge deal breaker for me. I just don't like it. But I can live with it. It's not, it's not that big a deal for me. What's more the big deal is the resolution. This has a 3K screen, 3200 by 1800. And that's overkill for a 13.3 inch Ultrabook, in my opinion. That doesn't need to be in there. Not only can the hardware in the Ultrabook not really push it as well as it probably should, but you need to use scaling. And in Linux, scaling isn't the best. In Ubuntu and, and GNOME 3, it's fine, but um, in, in environments like Mate, it's not great. Uh, but most most of them can take care of scaling, and not every program has scaling support. For example, Steam does not have scaling support, and that's that kind of sucks. So, as you saw earlier, what I've taken to doing is running this panel at 1080p instead of 3K, and that has solved my problems. And the display still looks pretty good that way. So, that that generally solves the problem with this. If you really want this Galago Pro, there are other reasons you're probably going to buy it than for the 3K screen. For me, it was the fact that I could the laptop is very it's an ultrabook that's very serviceable, has a ton of I/O on it, and is full aluminum and runs Linux very well. That was the reason I didn't that I bought it. I didn't buy this for the screen. So, you know, there you go. Um, the other Achilles heel of this machine, I would say, is the battery life. Uh, average online I've seen is about three and a half to four hours, maybe three hours. Three, th three to four hours, I would say, in between there is uh, your battery life on this, which for today's Ultrabooks is kind of meh, I would say. I mean, it's, it's really not any worse than the ThinkPads that I've had over the years, which is why I can handle it just fine. But for people that are used to Ultrabooks that get ridiculous battery life, uh, this one kind of fails in that department. 35 watt hour, 36 watt hour, somewhere around there is, the, is, the, um, is what you get on the battery. And the reason for that is because they actually have a 2.5 inch hard drive bay. Um, that probably could have been used for battery space, but honestly, I'd rather have the 2.5 inch hard drive bay so that I have the most options I can get on an Ultrabook. That's the whole reason I got this laptop, is because it's a very serviceable Ultrabook with RAM slots, drive bays, ports, you know, that that's the whole reason I bought it. I didn't buy this so that I could use it on a 16-hour flight to Australia or something. Um, 
So you know, it, it gets it definitely gets the job done though. I mean, four four three and a half to four hours is plenty to get work done on the go, in my opinion. Just make sure you're near an outlet, and and you'll be fine. Uh, I do like the backlit keyboard. It has the five levels of backlighting, just like the Gazelle does. Uh, you can turn off the trackpad, turn off the screen. All the same keyboard shortcuts are there, like the Gazelle, which is pretty fantastic. The webcam is pretty much the same, except that there's no 1080p mode when I tried it in OBS. And I will show you what those um, what uh, the webcam looks like right now in a few video clips. You'll see. Okay, this is a test of the um, Galago Pro with the webcam set at 720p. So a lot like the Gazelle video, you'll notice that the motion isn't perfect. It's about 10 frames per second. So it, it's about the same as uh, what I did for that particular previous video. So it's good enough for video conferencing. The microphone on this is excellent. But I wouldn't say that, the, that it's perfect. Um, you know, if you're going to make a video for YouTube, I recommend using a real camera instead of this, or using your phone or something. Obviously, the webcam is not going to win any awards. I would stream with this for sure, but uh, I'm not sure that I would make a full-on video with it. So, uh, it's good enough for video conferencing, which is really what these webcams are for anyway. So, there you have it. This has been a test of the webcam video at 720p on the, um, the Galago Pro. Okay, this is a test of the Galago Pro's webcam at 640 by 480. The frame rate is very good, 30 frames per second. That's the best frame rate you can get out of this is 640 by 480. So Clevo's using similar cameras among their um, models of laptops. So this is pretty much the same camera as what's in the Gazelle, except that you can't do 1080p mode, which honestly is not a big loss. So there you go. This has been a test of the... Uh, Galago Pro's webcam at 640 by 480 So as you can see, it's pretty much the same, except that you only get the 720p mode for the highest resolution, which honestly is all you're going to need if you're just doing video conferencing or something. Overall, I would say this is a great machine, um, with flaws. It has a very gen first generation feel to it. I think w as these machines age and go through several generations of Clevo manufacturing, they will get better. Um, the fact that the 3K screen pushes the Intel graphics a little too hard, um, I think is an issue that will improve in future generations. Um, running the screen at 1080p seems to solve that issue though, so that, y you know it's, a pr it's pretty easy to solve that problem. Um, but it's a very Gen 1-ish machine. I think down the road this will it'll improve over time. But even as a first Gen machine, I really like it, and I do plan to keep it. It's pretty nice. I like the Cabby Lake hardware in it. I like the Ultrabook form factor, and mostly I like the fact that they took the design cues from the MacBook Air with the thin and light. Well, not really light, but the thin, the thin laptop idea, and they put it in. A package that looks very similar but has I.O. and has the serviceability of a ThinkPad. And that's where I think the Gazelle, or the Gazelle, and, and that's where I think the Galago Pro absolutely shines. From a design standpoint, I love this laptop. It can only get better over time. So, you know, display scaling will improve in software over time. Um, the hardware design itself will improve over time. So, it's a bright future for the Galago Pro, I think. Even right now, it's a, it's a pretty great laptop. Uh, you just have to recognize its uh, Achilles heels and flaws and things like that. And with those in mind, if you can get over those, it's a, pr it's a pretty great machine. Um, so overall, I think they did a pretty good job with this for it being, the, uh, for it being just released uh, within months. So, it, 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 this was pretty delayed in getting it, too. It took me a while to actually get this machine. So, it's, it's in pretty high demand. It's, it's definitely made a, uh, an impression on the, la the laptop world and the Linux world. I even saw a PC World article about this laptop. So, it, it's getting some press, and I, I think it, it's well-deserved. Uh, obviously, it could use some work uh, because it's a first-gen design, but other than that, fantastic machine. Would I recommend it? If you can get over the, the, the 35 watt hour battery life and you can deal with the, the 3K screen stuff, you'll, pretty, you'll be happy with it. The, track, the, the complaints I have about the trackpad are very, are very nitpicky and minimal, but really the Achilles heels to this machine are the 3K screen 
the high DPI screen, and the battery life. So if you can get over those two things, you'll be very happy with it. Uh, so far, I've been pretty happy with it, and uh, I'll probably be taking this on trips with me in the future just to see how it works and how it holds up as a trip laptop. I think it'll be great for doing that because I don't use my I only really use my laptop at night when I go on trips because I'm out doing stuff during the day. So overall, I like the Galago Pro. I would give it a eight out of ten. I would say uh, it has some flaws, but most it's mostly good news here. So. For those of you who are curious about it, I, 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 that, this is my impression of it. So, so that is my conclusion on the System76 Galago Pro. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it very informative, and hopefully I gave you the detail that uh, everybody online here was looking for. And uh, have a good one, everybody. Ciao.